In this vlog, I want to talk about aperture and f-stop. Now, if you're new to photography, uh, all this can be a little bit daunting, but uh, if you can get your head around it, then uh, photography will become a lot easier for you. So, uh, so what I'm going to try and do in this vlog is explain how to use f-stops, what it means, and aperture. And uh, I've come to this location here to try and uh, find a composition where I can show you the difference within an image using different f-stops. So I, while I walk around looking for a shot, uh, I'll leave you with a bit of information on f-stops. Aperture plays an important role in setting up a composition and setting up a shot. The aperture is the hole in the lens which light travels into the camera body and onto the camera's sensor. The cornea of the eye is similar to the front element of the lens, gathering light and bending it inwards to the iris. The iris can expand or shrink controlling the size of the pupil, which passes light into the inner eye. The pupil is like the aperture in photography. So the larger the pupil, the more light falls onto the retina. The larger the aperture of the lens, the more light enters the camera. The diaphragm's purpose is to block all light, except for the light that goes through to the aperture. In photography, aperture is expressed in F numbers, which are known as F-stops. F-stops determine how open the aperture is for allowing light through. The smaller the f-stop, like f1.4, means the aperture is at its widest, allowing all the light through the lens. So if we go through all the f-stops up to f22, the aperture becomes very small, like a pinhole. So you need to remember, large apertures mean small f-stop sizes. By changing the f-stop, the aperture has a direct impact on the depth of field. Shooting at f16 will bring all objects in the background and foreground into focus. Shooting at small aperture such as f1.8 will isolate either the foreground or background. So I've set up here for a composition, uh, it's not going to win any awards, uh, it's just really a demo just to show you the different apertures and what it does within an image. Now I'm at f1.8 to start with, so the uh, aperture is wide open, allowing a lot of light in. Now I'm going to use 1.8, I'm not going to go through them all, I'm going to use 1.8 f5, f5 is usually the widest it goes on a kit lens. So uh, that will give you an idea what it looks like there. And then I'm going to go to F9, which is usually the sweet spot on a lens for sharpness. And then F16, uh, where it's uh, the dana You've got a good dynamic range throughout and it's sharp from back to front. So, uh, yeah, so I've got these trees sticking out here with the rocks over there. My focal point is that tree over there. So I'm going to start this one with F1.8 and... Uh, show you the composition. So in this first image I shot at f1.8 and focused on the tree, but you can see everything in the image is slightly blurred or out of focus, and that's the idea by shooting at this wide aperture. Now jump into the next image at f16, where the uh, aperture is small, uh, the depth of field is much better. You can see everything from foreground to background is completely sharp within the image. So you can see the difference here by having a large aperture and a small aperture. Let's look at f-stops through moving image such as film. 
The same principles are applied in film as in photography, although f-stops in film are called t-stops and are measured slightly different. In this scene I would have shot at f16 to establish the character coming into the scene so I'd want everything in focus so that we can see the location and surrounding area to establish where we are. In this scene I would have shot at f2.8 to soften the background or blur the background because the main focus are on the characters within this scene without any distractions in the background. And in this final scene I would have shot at f11 as I have two characters to follow around and keep in focus. So hopefully by looking at this through film it gives you a better idea of how f-stops work. So what I've done here is I've come very low to the ground with the uh, tripod. I've set up a group of rocks here in the foreground with some nice green moss and some dead leaves. Uh, those rocks are the subject here. Uh, in the background there you've got the old trees, the bushes and uh, you can see where the sun's been which is just fading out in the sky there. Um, once again not award winning image, not award winning images, just an example here of f-stops so on this again i've gone at f1.8 with the wide the uh, aperture wide open f5 f9 and f16 and uh, you can see how these work So in the first image here, I've shot at f1.8, focused on the rock there in the foreground. So by having the aperture wide open here at f1.8, I've completely softened the background, blurred it out. So the only thing in focus here is that rock in the foreground. Now the next image we shot at f5, still with the focus on the rock there, but you can see in the background, it's not as blurred out as the uh, f1.8. It's still blurred enough to keep the focus on the rock, but at f5, that sort of gives you this look. So on the next image at f9, um, if there was no foreground interest, the uh, image and the background would be completely sharp as this is the sweet spot of the lens. But because we got foreground interest, the background there is still gonna be blurred out, but not as blurred out as the previous images. And finally, F16. Within this image, you can see everything is sharp from back to front. Uh, and all the trees in the background are now sharp. For night photography, you will need a big aperture such as f1.8 to 2.8 to allow as much light through the lens as possible and have a high ISO to get the correct exposure. An f-stop of f16 to f22 are also great for creating a starburst effect with the sun and can make your composition more effective. So remember, the smaller the f-stop, the larger the aperture. The larger the aperture, the smaller the f-stop. If you would like to learn more how to master f-stops and aperture, I will leave a couple of links to some recommended books in the description box below. So I hope in this vlog I made it quite easy for you to understand how f-stops and aperture work. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching. Uh, please do subscribe, uh, hit the bell button to be notified every time I put a video up. So yeah, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye.